In this video, I'm going to walk you through a DIY power setup that doesn't take up so much space, it provides a lot of power, and can be powered by solar panels in your vehicle's alternator. Let me start off by showing you the setup of what we're going to build. We've got a box that houses the whole setup. On this side, we have a DC to DC charger, which powers the batteries when the alternator is running. We have a charge controller here, which powers the batteries when connected to solar panels, which we have on the roof. We have the batteries where our energy is stored, and then we have an inverter that pulls power from the batteries to power our devices. Additionally, we have a 12 volt fuse block that can power various devices. And these devices are all tied together through bus bars. I'll tell you up front that this video is a bit more introductory than my previous video discussing DIY solar builds that goes through every single detail of sizing wires, fuses, switches, shunts, connectors, and every other critical piece of information. I'll link to that video below. But instead, this video shows a solid overview, giving you all the information you'll need to understand the core concepts and have a clear understanding of how we built this. So let's go through each component and build this out. Box. For this van build, we're putting this all in roughly a two feet wide by a little over two feet long and about a one foot tall welded frame. This is mounted to the van's frame and we'll have a seat that will go on top of it. Of course, you don't have to put it in a box like this, but it gives you the idea of how small the space can be for a setup like this. I'm showing you the box to illustrate how small a footprint this has, but if you follow the principles we're laying out, you can build this anywhere you want to in your van. Bus bars. We built this small shelf of the bus bars to allow us to keep the positive and negative bus bars separate. We have the negative bus bar, shown here as black, on the top shelf, with the positive bus bar under the shelf, shown here in red. As you'll see in this video, I'm going to run all the positive connections from the various components to the positive bus bar first. And then after connecting, we'll put the shelf on top of it with the negative bus bar. Then I'll circle back at the end once all the positive connections are done, and then we'll connect all the negative cables to the negative bus bar. DC to DC. We'll add the DC to DC charger to the box. We mounted it on a piece of wood, which will connect to the main box. Shown here, we'll mount the wood on the side of the box. This charger has a ground on the bottom, so we went ahead and added the grounding wire before we mounted it since it's very hard to access. We'll then connect this charger to the battery of the van so that while the van's alternator is running, the house batteries in our setup will be charged. Under the flooring, we ran the positive and negative cables connecting them to the vehicle's battery compartment, which is powered by the alternator. Place a fuse at the beginning of the wiring leading from the van's batteries to the DC to DC charger to protect the wiring from overheating. The manufacturer recommends a 90 amp fuse for their cables, but we went slightly larger with an ANL 100 amp fuse. We found that an AMG 100 amp fuse kept tripping when charging from the alternator, so we went with an ANL fuse, and this resolved the issue. When in doubt, always use the fuse specs that manufacturers recommend. Finally, we'll connect the wiring from the charger to the positive bus bar. We'll add the negative connection momentarily. Inverter. Let's mount our inverter into the box and then we'll set up the connection from the inverter to the batteries of the positive bus bar. Since we're dealing with a very tight space, I purchased very flexible wiring from a website which I'd highly recommend. Again, everything is linked below. All right, we're gonna connect the positive terminal of the inverter to the wire that then connects to a fuse, which then connects to the positive bus bar. Connect the positive bus bars to a switch, and then connect the switch to a wire which will later connect to the positive terminal of the battery. Again, for now, we won't connect the batteries. Also, since we have such a confined space, I went ahead and plugged in my AC plug into the back of the inverter. Charge controller. For the charge controller, we'll connect this to a switch that connects to the solar panels on the roof. The positive and negative wire coming from the roof is run under insulation here on the wall and is connected here to a switch. From the switch, which I recommend you keep in the off position while connecting everything, we can connect to the charge controller. To mount the charge controller to the box, we'll put a piece of wood in the box and then mount the charge controller to the wood. Once the charge controller is mounted, we can connect the wires from the switch connected to the solar panels. On the wire coming from the charge controller, we have an 80 amp fuse per the manufacturer's recommendation. We'll then connect the positive wire from the charge controller to the positive bus bar. Just to be safe while doing this connection, you should either not have your wiring attached to the solar panels or have the solar panels covered to prevent dealing with live wires. 12 volt fuse block. Next is our 12 volt fuse block. This allows us to connect our 12 volt devices, such as phone chargers, lights, and other devices that are powered by 12 volts. For this block, we put it inside the wall behind the insulation. We'll build a cover for it later. And we connected this setup directly to the positive bus bar. Again, we added a fuse to the wiring coming from the positive bus bar going to the fuse block. Negative connections. 
As mentioned, when connecting up all the components of the batteries, we initially connected all the components to the positive bus bar, but due to the size constraints working in this box, we built a shelf for the negative bus bar so they can sit on top of the positive bus bar. Now that the devices have all been connected to the positive bus bar, we'll now circle back, add the shelf onto the box, and then connect all the cables from the various components of the negative bus bar. Once the items are connected, we'll then connect up the battery. Batteries. I use two 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries that can be connected in parallel. I purchased these cables that allow me to connect them in parallel as shown here. Connect the positive terminals together and then the negative terminals together. We'll discuss monitoring the batteries momentarily through a shot. Again, we won't connect our wire coming from the positive bus part to the batteries yet. We'll do this once we have all the components all connected to the negative wires. Since we have two batteries in parallel, I'll connect the positive cable coming from our system to the positive terminal on the first battery. Also note that I placed a 240 amp fuse on the positive terminal that our cable going to the system will be connected to momentarily. In the next segment, I'll connect the negative terminal of the second battery to the shunt. Shunt. Lastly, let's install a shunt. A shunt allows us to monitor the battery status through a monitor that we can connect to. As you can see here, the shunt is connected to the negative post on our battery and to the bus bar. We'll then run a small cord that it comes with to the positive post of the first battery in parallel. Then we connect the shunt to the battery monitor, which we've mounted here. Grounding. Next, we need to ground our inverter in our negative bus bar. I have a ground running from the inverter and the DC to DC charger to the negative bus bar. The negative bus bar is then tied to the frame of the vehicle. Testing. Okay, so we built this out, so let's make sure everything is working. To test this out, first we'll turn on the switch leading to the battery. As shown here, the battery monitor shows a battery's charge status. If we test the inverter, we'll see that we can draw a charge from the battery. Also, I'm testing the pure sine wave capabilities on the AC inverter and everything looks good. Additionally, as we run the alternator, the battery is charging correctly. Hopefully this video serves as a primer to give you a high level overview of how these components all tie together and set up in something like a van. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. Again, I recommend you check out my more in-depth video, which goes into far more detail explaining all the considerations when you go about setting something up like this. I'll post a link to that below. As always, stay safe out there.